Um, welcome to Childcare Offer for Wales Digital Project. So this session is on how to register a setting and join an existing setting. And my name is Mena Ward. So let me take you through the aims and objectives, which is to show you how to sign into the digital system, register your setting, and authorise other members of staff to join your setting. So this session will take you through the journey step by step to become familiar with the environment and understand the process. So the content is going to include how to create a government gateway account, signing into the government gateway. I'll take you through the process to register and activate your setting first of all, and then following on will be the process to join an existing setting. It is a step by step demonstration and at the end I'll signpost you to further help and support. So firstly, creating government gateway account. In order to register a setting, you'll need a government gateway account. So you'll need that user ID and password. You may have one already, which you can use. Um, if not, you can create a new account and there will be information online for you to take you through those steps. So um, as Amy was saying with the dates for you to uh, register your setting, um, as long as it's all done by October, that's be good. So there's no need for you to go and rush out and create the Government Gateway account now because you will still need the link to join the Childcare Off for Wales, which will be sent to you via the LAs. So um, hold on there. You will then be faced with uh, an account recovery screen, which will show that you have been success successful in actually creating your government account. And this account recovery screen is part of the childcare offer for Wales. So we'll ask for your name and date of birth, as you can see on this screen, your email address and contact number, which would be your own personal email address and contact number and you'll create your own memorable word if there's ever a need for the account to be recovered with regard to childcare offer for Wales. Following on from that, there'll be a screen um, where you can let us know your communication preferences, which language you'd prefer us to write or speak to. You. And then you arrive at the sign in screen to Government Gateway. So as I say, some of you may already have your user ID and your password, so by all means you can use that, but you still need that link from the LA. This is the sign in to Government Gateway, so you'd pop in your 12 digit character there for your user ID. And in the next box, it'll require your password, which you would have created on creating the Government Gateway. Then you simply click on the sign in button in green. Like that. On the next screen, it'll ask for your access code. So this would be a six digit access code. I've asked for mine to come through by text message on my mobile phone. So you'll have a choice of three different methods to get that access code when you create your government gateway. So I would pop in the access code, the six digits in that first box. And then if you're going to be on the system for the next seven days, working on it for the week, then by all means, click on the checkbox there if you like. And then you're ready to click on the green button once again to continue. Like that. So now, now we arrive at the process itself on how to register and activate your setting. So on the bottom right, I put in the key and you'll see that any boxes in the light blue colour are actions that you need to take as a provider. There is a one action that will be generated automatically by the system, so that'll be in green. And in red, then I've just put the steps that the local authority will take. So let's have a look. So the first step is to sign in with your government gateway and then you would select the option to register your new setting for the childcare offer for Wales. 
You then let us know whether your setting is a CIW or an Ofsted setting. You'd enter the CIW or Ofsted reference details, and I'll mention more about the details when I take you through the step-by-step -step process now following on. Then you'd enter your setting address and contact details. Step five is to enter your setting bank details. So at this point, I just need to let you know that the role of the lead owner or the setting manager for the setting itself would need to have that, the bank details, so the sort code and your um, account number. And then that person, the lead person, would view a summary screen where you can just check all the information that you've entered. And if you see any errors at that point, then you can click on the change option and make any changes before you move on to read the terms and conditions and privacy notices. Once you've gone through those steps, you're on the last step pretty much, which is to submit your request to register. And then the system itself will generate a childcare offer setting number automatically. And you need to keep this number safe. So it's, it's not your CIW number, it will be a unique number that's system generated. That's known as the childcare offer setting number. And that'll become clear again as I go through step by step. And then it's the role of the local authority. So the local authority would review your registration and it will be approved. As soon as it's approved, an activation pin will be sent to you via the post, not via email, it'll be sent in a letter. So with that pin number, your last step as a provider would be to activate the setting. And that's the whole process. I'll show this screen again towards the end just to reiterate the steps. But for now, I'm going to show you step by step what the screens look like. So let's go again, step by step. So you've already signed in with a government gateway and you're here at the childcare offer. And here's your first step. So you simply click on that option here, which is to register a new setting for the Child Care Offer for Wales and click on that red button to continue. On the second step, you let us know whether you're registering a CIW setting or an Ofsted setting. So I'm going to just focus on CIW first of all, so you click on continue. And for the CIW, you would need to enter your CIW registration number like that. Your setting instance number or SIN number. And that's followed with the registered postcode. So just to clarify, your CIW and your SIN number um, will be on your CIW online or you can see it on your CIW correspondence. But if you log online with uh, Care Inspectorate of Wales, um, you can actually copy and paste your registration number and your SIN number in those relevant boxes. The other thing to note here, and it does tell you this on the screen, is that with a SIN number, for you to please enter the number in its entirety using the prefix SIN- so you actually put SIN- followed by the number in that box. And that's it. You then click on continue. And for the next step, you would check the address. So here for the CIW, it does the validation online automatically. So you'll see your name and address of your setting at the top of that screen. So that's already been validated with information you've already given with your CIW reference. You then enter your email address and your contact number. And as it says here, throughout this whole system, you will come across these help texts, these, these bl blue text messages. And I've popped this one open so that you can see that the email address is required for your setting. So that's your setting email address. Um, in case it'll be 
needs to be used by the local authority should they need to contact you at the setting. The same goes for the contact number. So as it clarifies there, it will be your setting contact number. And then lastly, on the bottom there, you'd select the local authority where your setting resides and a box will pop up with a list of all the local authorities for you to select from. You simply click on continue to move on. Now I'm just going to take go back a second to step three because I just want to clarify the Ofsted steps. So with Ofsted, you would also put in the registration number for your setting. And when you continue, for you need to enter the address and contact details. So there's a slight difference here because there's no validation online for Ofsted settings. You would need to type in your setting name. You would need to enter your postcode and find that address from that blue button that's there. Pick your address up and then enter your email address. So that's your setting email address and your setting contact number as well as the local authority, the same as with CIW. So with the local authority, you would also have the list of local authorities appearing. Of course, if you're a setting in England, as it does say on your screens, the Welsh local authority in which most of your Welsh children reside is the option you'd choose. And then again, you just click on the red button to continue. And CIW and Ofsted, we both now we need to enter our bank account details for the setting, of course. So the name on the account, the sort code must be six digits long. There's no need for the dashes and the account number itself. Unless, of course, you have the building society roll number, uh, which you get off your passbook. So you complete the bank account details. I just to mention there that when you're setting is approved by the local authority. After that, you as the lead person would have to request the LA to make any updates to your bank account details. OK. And then the next step is you simply arrive at the summary screen, you check all the information that you've inputted, you'll have your personal details and your comms preferences initially because we created and signed into the government gateway. And then as you scroll down the screen, you'll see the address and the bank account details that you've put in. If you find that you've made any mistakes, any errors, then there's a blue link here which allows you to make any changes and it'll just take you straight back to those areas and you'd move forward back to your summary screen again. So further down the summary screen, you'll see your terms and conditions and your privacy notices. So you need to go through each one Click on the blue text and you can read the terms and conditions as you go through. Once you're happy that you've understood them, just tick each of those boxes as acknowledgements of your understanding. There is also a print this page button there, as you can see, and that would actually print the whole of that summary page for you as a reference. And then you're ready to submit. But just one point. If you do miss any of the checkboxes, then you would have a message just to tell you, oh, oops, you might have missed one. So in throughout the whole system, any errors that come up, you'll have a little notification and it comes up in red like that, just as an example. But we're OK at the moment. I've ticked all the boxes and I can click on the red submit button. As soon as you submit your your application has been submitted, you'll get this green banner with a childcare offer setting number. So remember I said there was one automated number that appears and this is it. This is your childcare offer setting number and you need to keep that safe. So uh, you need to write that down or keep a 
a log of that. There's a help text there as well. So that just clarifies that the childcare offer setting number is provided and this will be used in reference to your setting throughout all correspondence and childcare offer of Wales. So please retain a copy for your records. And then we just simply click back to my dashboard, which is the only button you have available. And there you'll have your notification to say that your registration is now being processed and the application will be reviewed by the local authority. There's your childcare offer set number as well, so you can just check that. You do have a link to the register new setting and you also have a link to join an existing setting here, but that's not the whole dashboard at the moment. So we are need waiting for approval. So on the next screen, I've made this in a red colour just to clarify that this is the role of the local authority. They review your registration and they validate your information. Some of it has already been validated online. Also, we can validate or LAs will validate offline if they need to. So once they've done that, they will approve your registration and an activation pin will be sent by post, not via email. Once you've received that letter as the provider, you'd come back into your setting and you'd activate your setting. So let me show you on the next screen here. You would have this notification to say that it's now been approved. Your registration request has been approved and is awaiting activation. So you're waiting for that letter to arrive in the post, which is going to be sent through Gov Notify. So that's first class post. Here you'll see that there's a blue link to enter your activation pin once you've received the letter. And here I've got an example of the kind of thing you'll be expecting. So I've just uh, grayed out the uh, names at the moment, but there's an idea of the letter you'd have and the activation pin number that you would keep safe because you'll need that if another member of your staff wants to join your setting. And I'll mention a bit more of that in a second. So for you, you would click the link just to show you again. You click on enter your activation pen. You've got the letter with the number. And you arrive at this screen, which will confirm the setting name, your childcare offer setting number again, and you pop in your activation pin in that box. Click on save and continue. And you arrive at your dashboard and now you have got details of your setting, your postcode, setting name, but more importantly, you've got links to claims and agreements. So you've got everything and that's how you register your setting. Let me just mention, however, um, what would happen if perhaps the LA would reject a registration? It won't happen that often, but it may happen. And um, when a registration is rejected, it may be because from validating maybe an Ofsted setting, they may have come across some errors, um, perhaps the registered postcode, for example, because Ofsted's information is not validated online automatically, as is CIW. But also if CIW notify us of any deregistrations, the LAs would need to come in and reject a setting. If that does happen, as a provider, you would get notification on your dashboard which says that's been rejected. But you still have the two links there, register new setting and join an, ex an existing setting. On this screen, I just wanted to show you this because this shows you that you can actually register more than one setting. So there's that link to register a new setting directly from your dashboard. That's without going into Government Gateway all over again. Just from your dashboard, you can click on register new setting and follow through the journey. And if you do have more than one setting to register, it would look a bit like that, where you've got a drop down 
option for the setting name, which you could click on. You'd choose the change setting option and then you'd be able to see the claims and agreements for your other setting if you have them. Otherwise, that's it. That's the process. So if I just move over and show you, that's the process to register and activate your setting. I might show that screen again at the end because all the answers are there for you. OK. I'm just going to move on now to show you how to manage or join an existing setting. So to manage or join, it's just the same thing, an existing setting, uh, you may, we had some questions yesterday, why would you want to do this? But you may want another person, maybe another member of staff, perhaps a business partner or someone to cover for you on the digital system, possibly when you're away. If you if you go on holiday, I know you're busy. Um, maybe if you're on sick or just simply not available. So we would recommend that you have another person as like a backup, if you like, it's like having a spare set of keys for someone to open up. So I'm going to take you through this process from the beginning. So as a new, as a member of staff wanting to join a setting, your setting, I would also need to create a government gateway account. I'd still need a government gateway user ID and password. I'd arrive at the account recovery screen, same as before, which is part of the childcare offer journey. So the details, remember here, is just your personal email address and contact number. Again, there'll be your comms preferences, just let us know how you want us to write or speak to you. And then you'd arrive at the sign in screen. So that's where you pop in your user ID and your password and you click on the green button to sign in. That's followed by the access code. So that will appear as mine does. I think most people tend to go for the text message just as a tip for you, a text message um, to your mobile phone and you pop, pop in the six digit code in that box. Uh, you can tick this one if you like, if you're going to be on the system for the week and click on continue. But let's have a look at the process. Oops. OK, so the process to join an existing setting and activate a new user to join. You see there's a key at the bottom right one scan. So the light blue colour is for a new user, the person who wants to join. And in dark blue, there's one step there that the registered user, maybe it's the setting manager, needs to do, and that is to activate you. So let me just show you. Government Gateway, sign in, and you select the option to manage an existing setting. Then here, the existing users, there'll be the setting manager, the lead person who initially registered the setting. That person has got all the answers. So they're going to need to pass this information on to you as a joinee. That will be the childcare offer setting number. That was the bit in green. The CIW or Ofsted registration number. The SIN number, which is only applicable for CIW, the registered postcode and that activation pin, which you've kept safe on that letter. So this is information that you can gather and keep before you even come online. And then once you've inputted that information, you arrive at a summary screen. You can check all that information. If you notice any mistakes, then you simply click on the link to change. You read through the T's and C's, acknowledge that you understand them. And finally, you click on the submit button. The setting manager, so it's the provider that manages this, comes onto the setting and selects the option to activate you as a new joinee. 
And that's it, just three steps. So let me take you step by step to show you what the screens look like. So you've already got your government gateway, you've already signed in, you've gone through all that other steps. Here, you're on the childcare offer. You want to join, so you actually select the manage option, manage a setting that's already registered. And you click on continue. Then here you enter all that information that you saw, childcare offer setting number, CIW, it will pop open to for the registration number, SIN number, remember SIN dash, then the number, register postcode, and you pop in the activation pin. Last step, step three, you view all the information, so it'll be your personal details because you put all that in on the initial account recovery screen, and then that continued with details of your setting and the acknowledgements. So if you see any errors, just simply click on the change link there in blue, and you can make any changes necessary. Otherwise, if you're happy, just tick all those check boxes after you've read the terms and conditions, privacy notices. You can print this page as usual, and then you're ready to click on submit. So as soon as you submit, you do have the green screen, which is good to go to say that your request to manage the setting has now been registered. And the only option you've got is to go back to your dashboard. So you come back to the dashboard and as a new joinee, you'd have the message to say that this is now waiting, your registration to join is now waiting activation by a setting user. So you wait. If I take you onto the next screen, I've made this dark blue because this is obviously the setting manager who had all that information to give you. That person will come in, sign back into their setting, and at the bottom here, you can see there's a section for users belonging to the setting. And there's an option then to activate or, sorry, just click that bit too enthusiastic there, um, to activate and deactivate an user. Um, it is possible for the LA, the LA also have the ability to activate and deactivate users, but this is really the role of the provider, the setting manager, for example, to allow other members of staff to join the setting to support them. And then once that's been activated, you'll have access to the whole dashboard, including the claims and agreements. So you'd have the same privileges and permissions as the setting manager. I just want to show you here that you still have this link. You've seen it before, register a new setting, but this time join an existing setting. And this is just to show you that once you're on your dashboard and you've got access to everything, maybe you manage or you help out in another setting. So it is possible for you to join an, another setting from here, maybe if you're working there on a part-time basis. So you click on join an existing setting. And if I just take you to the next screen, you recognize that you've still got all those options, all that information to gather to join a setting. So you put all the information in, step two and then there was three steps and then on the last step you have your summary screen and on this occasion you won't have your own personal details because you did it from your dashboard so you'll just have the details of the setting you'll just have that one acknowledgement to tick and you're ready to click on submit and then that gets activated by the relevant manager and, and that's it, that's how you join. So let me just signpost you for further help. So your local authority 
is the person to contact. Um, as Amy said, they'd be having training during the rollout week by week by week, so they may not be ready for the answers at the moment. You also can get help from your local family information service. There will be supporting information available online. This recording itself will be available online as soon as possible, so hopefully next week. And further information can be found on gov.wales website. I've just got another message I put on there this morning just to um, give you the heads up that there will be an agreement and a claims live event as well coming along in October and claims will be in December, but they will be um, advertised. So, so look out for that. Otherwise, thank you very much for attending.